Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Hello, Shalom Aleichem. Welcome back to today's Daf Yomi, Benoches Peches. We are holding around 10 lines off the top of the two dots. So this uh, connects with uh, the Brice that we, we, we learned yesterday, which enumerated the seven uh, various um, uh, measuring units used for liquids, for lach. Now, in the Brice, interestingly, we had the same listing presented twice. Just uh, they were presented uh, in, in different orders. So, meaning, Rabbi Yudah's, uh, setup was from the smallest measure. He started with Revius and went up to Chatzilug and progressively uh, went up to the um, largest, which is the Hin. That was Rabbi Yudah's setup. Rabbi placed it in a different order. He started with the biggest, the Hin, down to Chatzi Hin, to a third, all the way down to Revius. How long the obvious question is, my eco says the Gemara, my eco, what, what is the difference? Any practical difference between the two sheets? They seem to have a, some sort of machlaikis. But, but then they go and, uh, and they offer the same list, just in different orders. But ultimately, it's the same seven measuring units. My eco, Bain, what is the difference between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yudu? Um, Rabbi Yechanan, let me explain to you. There's a subtle difference, which is you know, reflected in their sequencing and the way they... Uh, ordered their units. Amr Vyechan Birutse. Birutse are the uh, spillovers, the um, uh, sort of the heap, the heaping liquid that sh- which rises above the actual rim, which uh, sometimes spills over the sides when we're less than careful, um, or when we try to pour from a larger container into a small container, it's hard to contain the, um, the heap portion. The question is whether that is included. Is that Kaddish? Is that considered contained in the Klisharis? Does that become Kaddish as well? That will be the difference between the two Shittis. The one that began his list from the smallest and made his way up to the biggest. He started with Revius, to Chatsi, to Lug, Kosova. It's because he holds Birutsi Amides Nizkachu. Right? Because when you, just like when you pour from smallest to biggest, when you go from small to big, you can contain the birutzim as well, where you take a small shot glass, right? So even if it's a bit heaping, if you have a larger container, you just spill it right over and all goes in there. And so on and so forth. You work that way, you go progressively up, it contains the birutzim because they are Kaddish. And the, the listing of his measuring measurements, of the measuring units, correspond to the way Hashem uh, actually instructed Maish Rabbeinu to establish these units. Uravis Yahav Le Rahman Allah Mesha. Hashem initially gave Mesh Rabbeinu Uravis Halog. Look, this is uh, gonna be called a Ravis Halog. Okay, that was the that was a starting point. And he used the Ravis to then develop the Khatsi, to then develop the Lug, right? He would pour two times Ravis into the next container, there you get a Khatsi Lug. Takes two of those into the next one, he gets a Lug. But the starting point was that single Ravis that Hashem gave. Bamarli and Hashem instructs him, Sha'er, you measure based on this one, and go progressively bigger and bigger. In which case, the message was, keep the Birutsin, you know, uh, in the fold. <laughs> they are also Kaddish. So that's reflected in the Shita of Rabbi Yehuda, who begins with the smallest and makes his way up to the largest. The Birutsin are meant to be included. Whereas, According to Rameir, Lamanda Omar Malamato, who begins with the largest measuring measurement, the hin and then drops down to Chatsi, etc. Malamato Kosava, because he holds the Beirutse Midas, the spillovers, the the heaps of the Midas, Lenin Scotch were not Kaddish. And the uh, system was established exactly the opposite way. The hin the reason why he begins with the first one as the hint, because that's reflective of the way Hashem uh, established it with Moshe Rabbeinu. He gave him a hint, look, take this hint and work your way down. Half of this is chatzi, quarter of that is, right? And he tells him, Shaher Ba, use this instrument for your measurements. 
In which case, when you spill from large to small, the Biruts don't just spill out. Is uh, you can't contain the Kanaf can be root, They just spill away because they're not really part and parcel of the uh, of the uh, interior content. So that's uh, Rabbi Yechon's uh, take on things. There is a Kanaf Kamina. There is a Machlokes regarding the Biruts. Abai Omar, Abai disagrees. He says the Kuli Yama. You know, this Berutzen factor is not really contingent upon these two shittas. All can hold one way or the other. That's not the point of contention. The Kuli Yama Berutzen, I mean this, regarding the Berutzen, the heap, Ikele Meimon is Kachur. You know, you can speculate that it is Kaddish. Ikele Meimon, you can speculate that it is Kaddish. It's not Kaddish. Rather, the difference of opinion over here relates to a different point. Vacha B'Meleim Kamifsky, the Torah describing the Content of the Klishara says, Shnei, Malayim, Soilas, they're filled. We learn that it has to be full with the proper quantity. Let's say it's missing something, it doesn't work, it's not Kaddish. But what about if it's over full? There's too much in there. Malayim, Kamifliki. So if it has the right measure, the right amount that you need, fine. But what if it has too much? Manda Amar, Malamala, Lamat. So according to Ramir, who started with the larger measurement and made his way down, because he holds malayim, when the Pasuk instructs, klesharis have to be filled in order to be activated, it can't be missing or have extra. So how does that relate to the order of the measurements? Rashi explains. Because if you go from small to big, for instance, in order to get to the Chatzi Halog. You fill a Revius once, spill it in. You fill a Revius again, spill it in. Inevitably, there's going to be too much in there. Why? Rashi explains, because you can never be exact. You can't be sure you're going to fill it perfectly, so you have to add another drop or two, right? To ensure that you filled it to the brim, that you filled it properly, topped it up to right? So, if you just fill a Chatzi Halog straight away, so you have one drop extra to ensure that it's, you know, but if you're going to fill a revius and you're going to add a drop there to make sure that it's full, put it into the chati log, then do that same thing again. You can add two extra drops, where typically you would only add, add one extra. So that gives you more than you need, and that's not acceptable. Rather, you start with the large measurement, which takes you the other way around. So you go from large to small, let's say you go from the chati log, and you use that to create a revius by splitting into two, don't have extra there. You only have one extra drop for the chatzia look to make sure that it was filled, and then you split that into two, so there's no extra material. That's Ramea's approach. That the Amida has to have exact amount. Not less, not more than necessary. Umando Amar Matalamala, whereas Rabbi Yehuda goes the other way, starts from small to big, he holds, it can have a drop more, even if the uh, measurement fills a little bit more than needed, Malayim just means Shalayaksa, I can't be missing material. Abel Yoyzeb, it has more than necessary. It's still called Malayim Karim, we can apply Malayim to that. Okay, so we have two, ma- two ways to explain the Machlekes. Between Ramein Rabbi Yehuda, which was indicated in their sequencing of the measurements. Either it's a Beirutzen question or a Malayim question. Omar Mar. Okay, let's go back and review Rabbi Shimon Omer. He says, uh, let's delete the hin measurement. What for? It was meant for one time use in the midbar. Says the Gemara, well, it almost sounds like he's just negating the whole thing. What's the purpose? His position seems to be uh, substantiated. What's, what's the purpose of the hin? There's no carbon that needs a, a hin of material. They respond, well, let's go back to the Midbar. Have a hin, David Moshe, the Shemana Mishra, of course. Moshe Benu made the hin for the Shemana Mishra, the Chsib, which needs that exact amount of oil. Twelve look. The Shemana Zai's hin. Okay? So needs that amount of, uh, of oil. Mar Savar. Well, Rabbi Shimon holds, since it wasn't needed for future generations, it was a one-time event. Uh, fine, it was made for that time, and then it was put away, it was never used again, it was never, you know, wasn't active again. Once it was there, it was introduced, 
it stayed on the uh, on the roster and it was considered one of the seven meters. Omar. Now even Rab Shimon, who deleted the hin, agreed that we have to replace it with something else. And that was the one and a half log measurement for the Chavitin, as we learned yesterday. Let's be a So who am I gonna put it instead? That was his question. And he answered, Who who says we need a replacement? Who says we need seven? Like Sagi, it's not sufficient to lay ayel, that isn't uh, introduce another replacement. The answer is there was a tradition that it's seven measuring units, just as we find in a similar uh, context. Ravina teaches us, Gemiri, we have a, a tradition, a Kabbalah, a teaching, that typically, a Karban Tzibur does not experience smicha, the leaning on the on the Karban, which is typically something that a private owner does, but not Tzibur, except for, uh, you know, there were two exceptions, two Karbanais, which had uh, a smicha. One is the Soir Hamishtaleach and Yom Kippur, the one that's sent away, and one is Par Helam Dabash al If the Tzibur errors seriously, they have to bring a carbon, they have to do smicha. Hachanami. So, in similar fashion, regarding measuring units, Gmiri, we have a Lach Mashin Sinai, the Sheva Midei Shalach, Yom Midash. Midash featured seven Midei Savlach, seven measuring units for liquids. The number is absolute. Exact. And if you want to delete the hin, sure, but you have to find a replacement, which he did. However, Rabbi Lezav Tzadok Eimer, there were no seven separate measuring units. Shnos Hashayi Behin, there was a large measuring container, a hin, which had marks indicating various levels. This is the lug, this is the but less Lesha Amidah, so he doesn't subscribe to the Lachal Meshav Yisina of the seven measurements. Says so the Gemara, either you can say, yeah, Leslie, he disagreed with the concept, or you can say, he fully agreed. But he had a different interpretation. Ma Sheva Mides, when we say Sheva Mides, Sheva Medide, seven forms of measurement. <laughs> but it could be all in the same container. Now the Mishnah will, will teach us the um, enumerate the functions, the purposes of these um, Various measurements. Revius. So the Revius halog. Ma'isim hashameshes. What was his function? What was his purpose? Revius ma'ayim matzer. Matzer needs a revius of fresh water to dip in his right. The bird there, right? Who revius shemen the nazar and the nazar for his breads. He needs a revius halog of oil to mix into his breads. What about the chatzil log? Ma hoy hoy mashamash. What was that? For chatzil log. That's the ma'ayim l'soita for the soita to drink. They have a look of the oil, a shaman for the latoida, for the toida breads. What about the lug itself? So instead of progressing upwards, what about the lug? The lug was standard fare. A lug of oil for uh, your typical mincha, a mincha which uh, has a sar and a flower, a lug of oil. Now, according to the Chachamim, if you expand on the flower, you donate a mincha of Two yisara, and then you do a double dose of lug of oil as well. Two lug, etc., etc. I feel a mincha shall samach yisara. You can have a big, huge mincha, a bowl containing sixty yisara of flour, which is sixty times as much as standard. All you uh, multiply the oil accordingly. No, he's saying lul samach lug. According to Rabbi Yaakov, I'm according to him. No, oil always stays the standard lug, irrespective of the amount of flour you have in there. No, he's lul. Uh, even if the milk contains 60 yisarn of flour, this is all based on the pesukim. and we'll see later in the Gemara. All you give is a, a lug of oil, no matter what the mincha is, it's always a lug of shem. Okay, so according to him, a lug is absolute. According to Rabbanon, it's uh, measured to the amount of flour. Now, if you have a, a carbon, a par, a cow, you bring six a lug of, of oil, which is the uh, half of the hen. Hen is 12. Shisha la par, six for the par. And uh, for that, we needed the, uh, the um, chatzi lug measurement, right? What about the, uh, the uh, third, a third of a lug, the shlishis uh, a lug, right? Shlishis a hen. That's for, that's for the uh, aisle, of Barla Isle. A third of a hin, a hin is 12 lug, a third is four, four lug for the aisle. Which is the keves, the keves, the, uh, 
The ram needed four, and the canvas, the sheep needed three. Three is a quarter of a lug, so that's the quarter of a lug measure, measuring unit for that. Okay, what's on the, on the topic of uh, measurement? Says the Mishnah, how much oil in total was used for the menorah on a nightly basis? Three and a half lug. Shloisha o mechzala menorah, because each lamp needed a half a lug. Chatsi lug, the whole ner for each ner, which was deemed sufficient to last you through the night. Now, the Mishnah spoke about the Revius being used for the Mitzorah, for the Nazar. Yosef Rabbi Vikokashi, Rabbi had a question on this. Revius, why did they anoint? Why did they sanctify the Revius measurement? Why was it considered one of the uh, seven measurements and, and, and sanctified for that purpose? To sanctify, to Mikadish its content. E. Mitzorah, is it to measure up the uh, water for the Mitzorah? Says the one Amid Beis. Chutzu, well, it was done outside the Azara, it was done by the entranceway, the Shar Niknar. So, we don't need to be Mekadesh the water, it's not a carbon. The Nazar, is it for the oil of the Nazar, for his bread? Well, in any case, it's not going to be Kaddish until later. Lechem, the Lechem of the Nazar, Bishchitas Ailu de Kaddish, it becomes Kaddish when you shech the, the carbon. So, what's the point of being Mekadesh the oil before? Amalir Rabbi Chiyah, Rabbi Chiyah, who came from Babel, and now was in Eretz Yisrael, turned to Rabbi, he says, I have an answer. Shabbat Shalom. Did the Chavit the Kohen Gadol? Remember, the Chavit the Kohen Gadol was split. Right? You have an isar and a flower split into two: half for the morning, half for the evening. The oil as well was three lug of oil split into two: one and a half for the morning, one half for the afternoon. Now, each dose, so to speak, each installment had six breads for twelve in total. So you have to take the lug and a half and split it amongst the six breads, which equaled a quarter a lug per bread. And that's why we needed a quarter lug measurement. Shabbat Yomai, the Chavit the Chavit Gain Gadol. Rabbi Yishemen, that much oil, l'chol, for each, chala v'chala. Rabbi was so excited by this answer. Kareli applied to him the Pasuk. In Yeshaya, Me'eretz Merchak, a man who came from a faraway land. Ah, Isha Tzasi is here to provide for me clarity, to resolve my shaila in a satisfactory way. Chatsi lug mishamish. Next question was regarding the next midah, the chatsi lug. What's it for? Yosef, Rabbi, Vikul Kashi, Rabbi had the same question again. Chatsi lug, What's the purpose of the chatsi lug? Why is it a klishares? What is it coming to be makadish? E saita, e this saita. Is it for the water of the saita? Well, in any case, it's already holy water. It's from the kiar. From the tank containing the holy water. Is the water mundane? The trich like dusha which needs to be sanctified by way of this kli. I'm kedushim because the Torah clearly instructs us to use holy water. It's already holy beforehand. What's the purpose? Is it for the oil of the toida breads? Once again, the same question as before. What's the purpose of being mekadeshet so early in the process? Lachmi toida the breads of the toida b'shchidas toida the kachi they get dusha later on. So, what, what do we need the Chatzilog as a cliche? So, Rabbi Rabbi's son, Rabbi Shimon, responded like this. It's meant for the uh, Menorah, actually. Right? For the Menorah, you need a half a log per lamp. And what did they use for that? The Chatzilog container. So, once again, Rabbi was so excited by the answer, he called him Neri Yisroel. The light of Yisrael provided this enlightenment. Ka'chaya, right on. You're right. It makes sense what you're saying. And interestingly, Tosis brings a, a similar response, a similar expression that Rebbe had in Masachas uh, Erechen, where uh, again he had a question, and uh, his son responded. This was regarding the Kiddush um, Hachodesh, regarding the uh, Lavana, want to do a. And he again responded with this type of response. He says, Neri Yisrael, he called him. The light of Yisrael. So Tesis says, because in both cases, Mishum da'ayri v'mide da'ayra. The topic of discussion is something to do with light. Kiyoyin hacha, v'neira, it's like the candles of the v'neira over here, v'asim, v'lavar over there, the light of the moon. And that's why this expression is apropos. Neri Yisrael, kachoy. Amar v'yoyin, amar rabbi. 
Rabbi Echan quotes Rabbi now, and he says, Ner Suppose you notice that one of the lamps, one of the flames on the menorah, went out in the middle of the night. You have to relight it. It has to be lit at least until morning. But can I reuse the same brick and uh, wick and oil? No, Nidash and Hashem and Nidash and Everything is like burnt out material. It's, it's, it's used material. It's like Deshen, right? Deshen means it's like burnt out. The oil, the psila, the wick, you, you have to re, uh, replace that all. Kate said, so what do you do? Mativa, you clean it out. Venois and Bashem and Madlikan, you refill it with oil and relight it. Yosef Rabbi is Rika becoming boilers. Rabbi Zika had a question. Does he refill it from bottom to top or does he just replace the missing oil? Let's say it went out in night, so half the oil was burned already and half is left. Do we replace the entire amount? Perhaps there's a din that you have to go and put in a full, uh, you know, chatzilug. look. That's so you have to you have to fill the manure, or do you only replace half the uh, the amount that was uh, that was been burnt down, that was left over that you cleaned out? You have to replace that part. That's it. You also, Rabbi Zrika, become boy. He had a question. Kshunoisim Bashem when he goes and puts in the oil, how much? Could be the Rishayna, like the original amount. He puts in a, a, another chatzilug. Or did he just replace what he took out, what was left over? Amar Abiram, Yapshita, of course, is Rabbi Yirmi, the Kabir Rishayna is the original Chatzi look. Why? The E, Kamasha Chasra, if he's just replacing um, the part that was left, that was cleaned out, Manoyadina and Maichisa, how you can never know how much that was? Was it two ounces? Was it three ounces? Perhaps you have to measure it up. Empty out the, uh, the cup, put it in a measuring cup, see how much is left. Four ounces? Okay, then put back four ounces of new oil. If that's the case, the Mishar Lehim Kein Sheva Mida is, so why does the mission suffice with just seven measuring units? You have to make a million. Nafesh Lehim Mida is too, you have to have many measuring cups. Because let's say you discover that you have to put back four ounces, you have to have a measuring cup of four ounces, etc., etc., because each one has to be, uh, has to have a measuring unit which uh, corresponds to its, its volume. Korea Lehim. So, Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Zrika, when he heard this answer, he was very impressed. It found favor in his eyes, and he says to him, Ah, Vador Chatzlach, your beauty, your, your prestige, your, your Hatzlacha. He blessed him, Neshav Hatzlacha, Rechav Advar Emes, Vam Hatzedek, should ride up and get to the highest point and the highest, highest heights of Torah, of clarity and of truth. It's Marnami, likewise, just as Rabbi Yechon tells us that you have to clean it out and replace the material. Amar Rabbi Avo, Rabbi Yechon, I have another Allah, another quote from Rabbi Yechon, Amar Rabbi Yechon, Amar Rabbi Yechon, Amar Rabbi, in the name of Rabbi, likewise, Ne'er Shekavsa, the lamp goes out, you have to replace the material, in Dashin HaShemesh, Dashin HaPsilo, the Psilo is considered rejected, it's considered used and cannot be reused, and the Shemen as well, because it Isis, what does he do? Mativa cleans it out, when Isis Mashemen, Kimidas, here we go. So here it's a clear dictation, clearly stating that he has to replace the oil as it was initially. The original Chatzilug, and then he relights it. This is a writer of Yermia's position. You should know that the lamps uh, on the menorah in the Migdash shall prakam hava. They were sort of sections, meaning you can bend them, turn them downwards to empty out the, uh, to clean them out. And then, you know, you put them back up to refill them. Why do they have to be part of the actual manure itself? Why can't they be removable? Why does it have to be shalprakam of Because he holds kiks of kikor miksha. When the Pasuk describes the manure as being made of a kikar, which is a certain amount of gold, and miksha had to be hewn out of one block, had to be one unit, inseparable. A menorah, venera seoksiv. It doesn't only refer to the actual menorah and the, you know, um, pipes, but the nearest lamps on top as well. And therefore, keeping them by atava, since it has to be cleaned out and handled, you love the prokamahavi, if they weren't constructed in a way that you can bend them side, well, you have them metaphorically. You couldn't do a proper job. So it had to be physically part of the menorah, but pliable in a way somehow that they can turn it sideways and, and you know clean it up. May say comes a cash. Gates the oyster. So the Bible describes the uh, process of cleaning out the manure, Mesalkon, he removes the cups, removes them, so they were removable. Umanikum oil and puts it into the oil, the you know the Besamigdash there. 
Umakanchem Besvoy cleans them out with a, some sort of absorbable, absorbent material, Benoisin Ba Shemen, a Madlika, and refills it with oil and, and lights it. Clearly, they could be removed. Says the Yehuda Makaitana. The um, earlier statement, where we learned that they cannot be removed, that's going to be consistent with another shita, that in fact holds the Neiros will part and parcel of the Neiros itself, cannot be removed. No, they wouldn't uh, move the cups away. Well, it says the Gemara, well, it sounds like they could. Uh, it sounds like if they want to move it away, you could move it away, that it wasn't physically really connected. And that again is not really consistent with what we're saying, that it's really part and parcel of the same. Rather, it means like this, it, it really wouldn't move away because it, it was inseparable. So we modify the uh, wording of the Brisa consistent to the earlier statement that the uh, Neiros, the cups, were really an integral part of the Menorah and physically connected. Machacham Rablazi, who is the uh, sheet of the Chachamim, which, uh, which Tana is it? Rablazi, he holds that, uh, in fact, the Neiros were also part of the Kikor Zav, or part of the Miksha, and cannot be separated. So he describes the cleansing process like this. So we picture the um, lamps, the cups on top of the pipes, more like an oval, right? So if these are the pipes, right? This is the goof of the nerve, the bottom nerve, and then we have the lamp sticking out. And the, the uh, wick protrudes from the corner, so it's an oval-shaped cup, right? And the wick comes out from the front, let's say, right? And on top there was like a toss, a little uh, slat of some sort, cover, Golden cover. So when he needed to uh, clean out the uh, the cup, he had to get it out of the way. So he would push this uh, slat, this cover, towards the mouth, which is where the wick would typically come out. So it's away from the body, from the pipe, from the back of the um, of the cup, towards the front. So he push it away, get it sort of slide it up, and clean out the uh, cup, and then we slide the lid back on, when he's ready to fill it with oil, he slides it back towards its head, head means where it's connected to the, uh, the menorah, from its back, right, so it's connected, the back of this, of this cup is connected to the menorah, so he pushes the slat back, and now it's covered, but uh, as Rashi says, there was a little hole, a little access hole on that lid, uh, uh, through which they would pour the oil. So again, clearly, there was no removal of the of the actual cup because it was considered part and parcel of the of the menorah's body. And really, it's a machlekes tanoi. We flukta in tanoi. The sanyo menorah v'neiras seah boys from kikar. The menorah and its neiras and its uh, cups came from the uh, the kikar, the same sort of uh, you know block of of gold. Ve'ein malka chev machtes seah men akikar, but the uh, tweezers and the uh, or shovels, whatever, although they were gold, but they weren't really, you know, manufactured from the same block. It was a, a separate, you know, sort of a separate thing. Only the menorah itself, but not those extra things, even the neighbors were not part of the kikar. What's the machlekas about? Based on the pasuk, the sign, the kikar, zor, tar, yasa, so, the Pasuk relates the Kikar Zohar to everything in the Menorah. And again, the Kikar means the block of gold from which everything was hewn out as, as one mixture, right? As one, right? So, we learn from him, that the body of the Menorah itself was, was uh, designed from this Kikar. What about the Neiris? And that covers even the neiros. What about the other utensils? Were they also made from this gold? Obviously, they're not going to be connected anymore because they're tweezers. But in a sense, they're still connected because they're sort of sourced from the same block of gold. So here it's a bit different. The body of the menorah and the and the neiros, according to the shita, that comes from the um, kikar, 
that was one entity, one inseparable physical entity. But here the Akhachem uh, they came from perhaps that gold, part of that gold was used for this, but it certainly it's a separate you know, utensil. In any case, perhaps these were also sourced in that gold. Only it. Which excludes the, uh, these utensils. So according to the Mechemi and this price, so, the only thing that was uh, from the Kikar was the body of the menorah with the nearest, which were considered all physically connected. Okay, so here we go. We find the shita. That actually, considers the nearest as part and parcel of the mirror, and we're not sep- not separable, physically connected. That's from the shita. And um, the previous price here was actually Rumchem as well. And he said the nearest were not really part of the same kikar. So they didn't have to be mixtured, they didn't have to be uh, chiseled out from the same block. They, they were separate entities and could be separated from the nearest as well when, when, needed, when, uh, when they needed to be cleaned out. Okay, so this is before we get to the um, the next shita, which is coming up soon, right? I was looking at the second time. It's coming up soon, right? So again, again, the Gemara said, "Repluk dani tanoi." This question revolves around machlekes tanoi, and the question of whether the neighbors are uh, are connected or can be disconnected is really another machlekes tanoi. So it began with the brisa uh, that the neighbors are part. And Rechemi says, Neres are not part. Okay, fine. So we have two shittas. Then the Gemara says, well, actually, let me explain to you what it's about. It's based on a Pasuk. And then we introduce another Bryson, which will, which is meant to bring me those two shittas, right? And these sourcings. So, so far we had only one shita with one source. We began from Rechemi again, that the uh, Neres are together. And it's based on the Pasuk, right? That um Ela tells you that the Neris are included as well. And in a minute we're gonna bring another sheet of the opposing view that the Neris are not part, and it's based on another Duke in the past. It's coming soon. Before we continue, we seem to have a blatant contradiction. Within Nachemya, the same person seems to be saying two opposite things. Because we just recently said, Kotra Nachemya the Neris are included. And earlier, if you back up a little bit, you'll see we have a Nechemi up there who says Neris were not an integral part of the manure manufacturing process. It wasn't part of the mixture. It came separate and could be separated. Kasha, Turim Nechemi, Turim Nechemi. What do we do with that contradiction between Turim Nechemi? Do two versions of his opinion. Turim Tanoi, for the Nechemi, two Tanoim with differing, you know, versions of Nechemi's opinion. Okay, now we continue to the Opposing view and the opposing source. The Neris are not part. Rabbi Shubin Karchaima, Menorah is a Only Menorah itself was chiseled out of this block of gold, but nothing else. Vein Malkocha, Umach Tesa, Vein Neris, even the lamps, even the can, even the, the cups, they were not from this same block of gold, boys, Menakik. Velamani Mikhaim is called Kaimaila. What then does the Pasuk refer to when it says all these Kalim are included? Show you Kalim shows up. Simply to tell you that everything else has to be gold as well. So in terms of equating it to the manure with respect to its material, respect to its gold, yes. But not more than that. Well, for that we don't need a Pasuk. Zohar Bet Yuxipa, it really has a Pasuk. Telling us that all these were made of gold. Right? So the manure was made with seven pipes and has a seven in it. Here we go. The other utensils are made of gold, so it's a clear pasik. The answer is that um, when the pasik has to say us it's coming to cover to address the pinaris. 
the, um, the place where the uh, wick sits, where the fire burns, and it sort of burns out and, and consumes the gold. So you, you sort of... Sankhita uh, perhaps I would say, I would think since that spot where the wick sits, the, the, you know, at the, at the corner of that oval-shaped cup, it blackens, it burns out, so maybe you don't have to use the best gold for that spot. Hatera chasa al mamani shayi shor. Hatera is concerned about unnecessary spending of either shigelt, and therefore perhaps v'li abed zavet zohav koldu. Perhaps I can that that spot I can use it for that. I can use even plain gold, not you know the best high quality gold. Kamash malon says the pasuk says no no no, everything is gold. Everything is the best gold. Even that spot. Okay. So bottom line is like this. We have an interesting Shiloh. What is the status of the nearest? Are they really part and parcel of the nerve to the point that you can't separate them? Even when you clean them out, you just have to sort of lean them over, tip them over with some sort of um, you know, apparatus that allowed for it. Or do we say, yeah, it's not really an uh, integral part of the manure, it's not part of the kikor, it's not part of the miksha, and you can just remove it, clean it out, put it back. So that's a machalik stanim, it's based on the, uh, the pasuk, how you learn the pasuk, which describes the uh, making of the manure, the ki- made from the kikor zov, miksha, hewn out of a solid piece of gold, is included in the as well. Now all agree that everything is made of gold, in fact it has to be the highest quality gold, but uh, the question is, what status do the neighbors have, part of the manure, or are they separate entities? Okay, we discussed the um, various uh, liquid measuring units. We discussed the status of the birutsin, status of uh, malayim. Is it meant to be just filled or perhaps even overfilled? Uh, would it be okay too? We discussed whether there was a hin, udairis. We discussed the halacha mashimsin of sheva midais or sheva medidais, depending on how you learn. The function of the revis, the function of the chatzilug. And Machlok is regarding a, uh, a bigger mincha, how many luk shaman does it have? We have uh, Rabbi praising Rabbi Chia, praising his son Rabbi Shimon, Neri Yisrael, interesting anecdote from Taisvitz. We had uh, Rabbi Azrika uh, praising Rabbi Yermia, Vahadar Chatzlach Rochav, with Hatzlacha. We had Rabbi Echan's Chiddush that uh, you have to replace the oil and replace the uh, wick of, a, of, a, of a, uh, an extinguished candle. In the minute, we had the halacha that Ner Sheva Migdash shall prokem hava. It was sort of uh, pliable so that you can keep the, uh, you can clean it, but uh, keep the uh, cup still connected to the minute. Okay, all the best to you. Not slacha wrap.